Donald Trump forgets that his own policy would have put to death an individual he brags about saving. Also, Governor Ron DeSatan, who's running for president, is a jobs killer, and we got the proof. Let's first go to the Trump interview classic. Here it is. I focused on nonviolent crime. As an example, a woman who you know very well was in jail. She had 24 more years to serve. She served for 22 years. She had 20 Alice Johnson. Alice. She was in the Super Bowl. High quality. Oh, yeah. I said, how many years? And she was on a telephone call, and they were involved in selling marijuana, mostly marijuana. And she got like 50 years in jail. But she'd be killed under your plan. Huh? As a drug dealer. No, 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 under my, oh, under that? Uh, it would depend on the severity. It Here would depend on the severity. Ad, she's technically a former drug dealer. She, the, she had multi-million dollar cocaine ring. Any said, drug dealer, look. So even it, Alice Johnson in that ad. It, she can't do it, okay? By the way, if that was there, no, she wouldn't be killed. It would start as of now, so you wouldn't go to the no, past. No, but your policy. Exactly, you saw that, right? Donald Trump probably forgot about his policy because he just talks. Most of the time he just talks ish. So while he's talking, he forgets his previous proclamation. Isn't that ironic that the dude from you know Fox News gives a tougher interview? than anyone I have ever seen at CNN. It was actually a fascinating interview that created significant ripples from that moment. That's just one of them. Now remember, he's number one. He's polling number one in the Republican primary. Many polls have him defeating even current President Joe Biden. But that one moment is a highlight of his internal and external policy, which is to simply say whatever he chooses to say in order to win the moment. He's not trying to actually win for people. And so he offers one narrative that paints himself inside of a picture that shows him to be, you know, progressive on a particular policy, while at the same time, he's not. And then when challenged, he basically says, yeah. Yeah, she she can get some too. Now, let's go to DeSantis. All right, the numbers are in, a new Florida law. Cracking down according to the law on undocumented immigrants. Signed last month by far right governor Ron DeSantis. And said to take effect on July 1st. Has pushed thousands of workers to flee the state, thousands. Now, even some capitalists and Republicans who otherwise support DeSantis and the state's GOP controlled House and Senate are beginning to speak out against DeSantis about how they feel the law is likely to hurt their bottom lines. Now, before I get into the rest of the numbers and the background, keep in mind the cultural war that Governor Ron DeSantis has waged typically did not adversely impact individuals like this. So they were sitting back cheering him on saying, yes, we support your values, even though your values are bigoted, antithetical and racist. But when those bigoted, antithetical and racist values permeate into a policy that impacts the bottom line of conservative capitalist, All of a sudden, whoa, what are we doing here? This is not a good policy, DeSantis. Well, it wasn't a good policy to start. This is just, let's just call it a maturing of the original sentiment he proposed that you support it. There's more, Florida right wing lawmakers, Florida right wing lawmakers, passage of Senate Bill 1718. Thousands of working class immigrants, including many who are residing lawfully in the US, have opted to leave the state of Florida. The new law places harsh restrictions 
on undocumented immigrants. Among other things, it also requires the repayment of certain economic development incentives. If the state which plans to conduct random audits of businesses finds or is notified that an employer has knowingly employed an undocumented immigrant without verifying their employment eligibility. Now here's the irony of this, DeSantis is actually correct on the policy. Let me say that again, the irony of this is that DeSantis for that one part is correct on the policy. The federal government says it is illegal to hire a person who is undocumented, okay, knowingly so. But when you see undocumented workers being arrested and the camera crew being present, you never see the hiring manager or the CEO or the human resources officer. You never see them being placed in handcuffs. They typically will receive a civil penalty, a fine, they will call it. But everybody else gets arrested. So while he's actually correct on the implementation, or at least on paper, he's now going against the status quo of his capitalist friends. At the end of this, DeSantis will absolutely revoke this proclamation against business owners. He will turn, change, he will see the light and not restrict their ability to make profit. There's more. At the bill signing on May 10th, DeSantis, who is now campaigning for president, slammed Joe Biden's lax immigration policy, saying, and I quote, we have to stop this nonsense. This is not good for our country. This is no way to run a government, end quote. Data released earlier this month showed that unauthorized crossings of the US-Mexico border fell sharply after the Biden administration imposed new asylum restrictions that went into effect. Then Title 42 ended on May 11th, undermining DeSantis' dubious accusation of inaction at the border. Immigrant rights groups have condemned Biden's crackdown on asylum seekers, saying the president's new ban deepens the bipartisan abandonment of international human rights law, set in motion by the Trump administration. I concur. Biden has doubled down on these very dangerous, very insensitive policies. And the truth is destabilization of any nation, destabilization of any nation will lead to a mass exodus. And if you do not have a holistic strategy in order to at least address why the destabilization is occurring, and you're only going to arrest or deport yourself out of the dysfunction, of the destabilization, you will be here every single year, no matter what. There's more. Meanwhile, in Florida, DeSantis' xenophobic approach has sparked fears that a labor shortage will leave crops unpicked, tourist hotels short of staff, and construction sites idle. The Tallahassee Democrat noted, notably, concerns are emanating from some Republican proprietors. How can one man, listen to this, they are asking, how can one man pass one law and destroy all these businesses in Florida? As Williams, it's almost like he's doing it on purpose, he says. I know he's doing it for politics, but if the end result is going to be hard, you see Williams, You know why this is happening to you, sir? Because when he did it based on one law to black protesters, you said nothing. When he did it against members of the LGBTQ community, you said nothing. When he utilized the power of the governor's office to penalize a private company right to political speech, you said nothing. And now he's knocking at your door and you have no neighbors willing to speak up for you. Because you did not speak up for them. That's what's happening in Florida. And that's the plan he's bringing to this nation. Max, thoughts. Hey, Dr. Richie, thanks for having me. I I think what you showed here, clear as day, is that these two Florida men, what they have in common is that they're very strongly for, you know, executing drug dealers, cracking down on illegal immigrants, 
as long as they're not their friends. When Donald Trump knows a person, well, then execution's off the table because that's obviously a different case. And we see from these Florida businesses, a lot of them thought they were Ron DeSantis's friends. And now that his ambitions have gotten bigger, they're maybe not in that inner circle anymore. And they're gonna be treated just like the rest of us. And they really don't like that. But it is it is kind of mind blowing to see Donald Trump just forget that he said he wanted to execute every drug dealer. Right. I mean, this really shows you where the GOP is at. You don't need a coherent policy. You don't even need to remember your own policies. Just throw the red meat and, and the voters will follow you. And that puts us in a really dangerous position as a country. And that is the way they govern. In addition to campaigning yep. this way, they govern this way.